Welcome to Project Pack number 10. This is day eight. My name is Rick. Hi, I'm Maria, and uh, we're going to watch Rick do some magic here. And we're going to work with fragments and reticula, or reticula and fragments. And this is a concept that we came up with when we brought our primer uh, volume one out. And just, just we were really excited about this. Right? This was, to this me, the the... the, the Cool. You know, it was such a great uh, thing to add to this. That, you, know, you know, it was a great way to uh, explore tangles, to take a small little snippet, and then uh, yeah, to think that, that all you have to do, you don't have to design a big tangle. All you have to do is design this tiny little square, and and then you can put it together in different ways. So, right. like here's an example of, of various fragments put together in even that frame too, and the, and all of that frame, yeah. And so in the book, we've, uh, we have some pages with examples on them. And I'm going to duplicate some and uh, create some new ones. OK, go for it. So in, in this one, this is, happens to be fragment U4. And oh, I just realized, euphoric. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. OK, you, you couldn't help with that one. Um, yeah, so anyways, this is taking a, uh, one of these little squares, and we're just going to make a shape in it, which is another square. Just tilt it a little bit. Just tilt it a bit. And I'm going to just color in those sections. And part of what I want you to visualize is how these would go together if they were side by side or when they're side by side and either reflected or rotated. It's funny, I don't think I've ever tried that particular uh, one, and I'm gonna try it like today, it. yeah. Now this is one that Maria did, F2, in an earlier one, I think it was in the borders. Right, in the borders, and uh, it's one of my favorite ones, yeah. it's kind of fun. Well, it, it's got light and dark, it's got curve and straight, and... Uh, it's kind of exciting, it's got character. And as, as you can imagine, if you were to put them side by side and mirror them, you can see how you'd have this like big circle happening and then this square that was popping out under four different corners. Yeah, you could shade that so that it does yeah, some, yeah. some cool stuff. And so these are all like, think of this as like a seed packet, right? Yeah. And you can plant them and watch them grow in all sorts of different ways. Now this is H5, and we we did this one a couple times in the uh, in the book, and you, I think we did that on that facing page uh, that we showed you earlier in the video. So watch, he's doing exactly the same thing on all four corners. So it's it looks like sort of a random stroke, but they're very very explicit. And and by turning the tile, all he has to do is the same thing in each corner. And when you put these together just as they are or mirrored, you end up with two totally different meta patterns. And that's something that you'll see a lot of in these fragments and reticula, and we'll do, we'll do an, an example at the end, is that the shape by itself is what it is, but then when it's next to itself, it creates these other meta shapes. It's really cool. It you is. did a big study of that in the in the primer too. Yes, there's yeah. a lot a lot of really great things. And the other part of this that's fun to play with is that you can distort these squares. You know how we like change and play up uh, Knightsbridge. It doesn't always have to be perfect uh, ninety degree corners. Is when you have a four sided shape, you can explore how you know like. Uh, you know, when you have, what's that, silly putty. You, yeah. know, you would put it on something and then stretch it a little bit so you can distort it, yet it all hangs together. So this little one on number four here is actually a, a kind of a Z shape. If you if you right. uh, flip the, the square over and, and then it's the Z shape and then you just ored the whole thing. And that number four, by the way, is a really great one to uh, rotate and mirror and mm -hmm. play with that. This one here, this F uh, or T7, is a good example of how some of our uh, tangles uh, became really great um, 
fragments. So this is uh, one of my birthday presents to Maria. It was oh, is that tangle. Asunta? That's Asunta. Ah. So if you put it together, mirroring, that mm-hmm. would be that would be Asunta. That's right. That's right. And that, what a what a beautiful shape that is, like a teardrop. Right. Uh, very very nice. And uh, we welcome you to to try these um, once once in a while, just to take a take a day and just do fragments in reticula yeah. and, and see what happens. They're, they're so wonderful. And the uh, little bijou tiles are really great for this because you can do these little uh, sample explorations and, and just do a small little, uh, it's a small little sandbox of patterns. Now this is uh, very similar. You'll have recognized this as flukes from right. I an did earlier one, video. I did one and you did one, yes. right? So for that reason, I wanted to really make sure that was in here. I don't know what that's going to be. This Well, this is going to be Q2. Q2? <laughs> <I> don't remember. <laughs> Q2. QT, maybe. <laughs> so actually, there is a T. We're going to um, put this... Uh, um, sort of dividing this shape up, and in this shape, we're going to take that basic uh, T and then add aura. And again, the uh, the magic of this little piece comes to be understood when you put it next to itself in different orientations. Mm-hmm. And you can also see how we're using the, the light and the dark and the aura throughout all of these uh, exercises. Those of you who like straight line tangles, I know yeah. there's a whole <laughs> bunch of you out there. Well, and square fragments mm-hmm. in particular lend, lend themselves Yeah, but that never stopped me from making no, them curvy. True, yeah. Yeah. Speaking of straight line tangles. This is another one? I guess I... Uh, you must overloaded on straight I lines. I sort of overloaded, yeah. so this is a nice balance for... Fragment A4. You're sort of a straight guy, kind of. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> I get, but now and then I can uh, do... What was that one? Like Hollis, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was pretty curvy. So we're... we're in this fragment, having different levels of uh, light and dark. So in on one side, we have no ink. On the other s- two sides, we have lines. And then the opposite, we have solid. So again, you can imagine how those might go together. This looks like a Bales kind of thing coming up. Yeah, so uh, you can refer to J6 and... Uh, we went back to many of our tangles that are um, grid-based, and they obviously lend themselves wonderfully to uh, to being a reticula or to being a fragment in a reticula. And reticula is a is a fancy word for like net or mm-hmm. overall structure into which you would put something. We didn't really want to say grid because some you know they weren't yeah. they weren't straight grids, some of them were triangular, some of them were round and uh, we didn't want you that word to limit you. So it's basically a crescent moon in that bale shape. Nice. And again, you can imagine rotating it and mm. mirroring it. Right? Nice. So in this last one I thought, okay, I'm going to make one up. And oh, that's always <laughs> <right>? <laughs> dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> on the fly. <laughs> and I just drew a uh, line, straight ones, by the way, uh, from one corner to uh, the middle of the two opposite sides. And then I put a, uh, you know, like a, you know, like how Molly did in her, what was, she, what was the one? Oh, uh, wait a minute. Um, the one Munchen. that's Munchen. Like in Munchen. And in this case, I drew it from the, the side to the dot because I wanted to make as even gap as I could, and I can always just put it down. We're, we're, we're going to play with that one later. So now, um, for those of you who have, have played around with Tripoli, we took the idea of a triangle as a uh, reticular element. 
and here we're going to create another one from the book. So not only do we have lists of um, fragments, we also have many different reticula to choose from, right. uh, maybe ones that you haven't thought of. And we're, we're working on more as right. well. Yeah, so. yeah. I love to do Tripoli. It's uh, and and what happens is when the grid disappears, you you wonder, oh, what? Yeah. How did that work? Because you can make them really wiggly and stuff, and they still come out great. You'll notice perhaps that some of the fragments uh, don't change when you rotate them, and then others do. So th this, even if you rotate it like that last one in number two, it looks exactly the same. Or if you mirrored it, it would look exactly the same. And then this one here, if you were to mirror it, it would look different. But if you rotated it, it would look the same. And all of that may sound like so much word soup, but when, mm, you, start, mumbo -jumbo. <laughs> when you start to actually play with it, it's like, oh, I get what he's talking about. So uh, we encourage you to, these are really simple tangles. And uh, so here was another new one. Oh I my thought, God. Let me try this. So I'm just connecting the centers, and you can imagine how this might look when it's put together in different ways. Actually, this, I think, could only go together in one way. Right. And then this was uh, an adaptation of one in the book, of L12. Just to give you an idea of, you can look at the various things that are in the book, and say, oh, well, I'm going to do it a little bit different and see what that looks like. We also have a book of just reticulate oh, yeah, fragments yeah, yeah. that our CZTs all got together to do at one of the um, Zenikin, Zenigans. Yeah. And it's a fabulous book, and you can see everybody's work, their names there, and um, they got out, They each got little assignments. Right. And, it was and a if I book. remember, I'll put those links in the... Oh, that would be good. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm doing... C21, and then I'm looking at this, it's like, oh, wow, that's pretty cool right there. I wonder if I could do something with that. Mm. But, but I decided to just go back and do, do the one that was in the book because uh, I had already done a couple new ones. So you can, again, imagine how you might uh, organize those uh, circles. And this is an interesting one. I'm going from the like the north, south, east, and west, you know, connecting north and east and south and west, but it's sort of like that baseball stitching. Or basketball, a real or tiny, basketball. tiny <laughs> little basketball. So in this one, putting a uh, triangle in the middle, it's L25. Doesn't it look like a token? <laughs> it does, it does. And we'll wait to see the next one. I think it's the next one, or the one after. And again, just extending those lines. And this is a really fun one to arrange in like a, in a six-sided where they, where they meet up mm -hmm. or go under and, uh, and then shade the over and under. So a lot of these have a real great over and under shading possibilities, like this one. Just these arcs. And the point of this is each one of these is really simple, but if you go back and look at that opening chapter page, it can look really complex, but you'll see some of these on that page. And this was our, my token, so to speak, of memory tour to when we visited so many friends in, uh, in Taiwan and Korea with the, with the coinage there. Mm -hmm. And Japan. So just extending those lines and then imagining how you would shade the over and under. Cool. And you can fill them in and, and make changes. And this is really, a, a, the whole point of this is to inspire you to say, wow, well, yeah, but I could do this. And, 
I don't hesitate to add more little fragment squares all over these pages yes. in, oh, that's true. Yeah. nestled in there. There's nothing telling you that you can only right. draw what we tell you to. We, we, there's plenty of room there. So I wanted to play with the one that I came up with, and I actually came up with it as I was recording, and I'm going to do this for the first time, and let's see, let's see how it goes. So I'm going to set up a grid on one of the uh, white tiles that you got in your uh, Project Pack 10, and I'm using the 01 black, and I ended up making five lines in one direction, five lines in the other direction. So I've got, what is it? Four by four. Four by four. So let's, let's do that one and, and see, see what happens here. So it's pretty straightforward. It's from the middle of one side to the corner, and then the middle of one side to the corner. And then just do uh, a little bit to one side and just make your way into the corner there and just keep doing that. And I sort of gauge it so I, you know, somehow it looks somewhat even, but, you know, I, I don't really worry about that. It all works out. And you'll notice even those little bits, a lot of that time I'm turning my tile each time and my right hand is uh, just staying in one place. So now I'm going to do what is called mirroring. So if you imagine, you know, one of them, you know, the first one was right up against a mirror, what would the image in the mirror look like? So I'm also playing with where those lines ended. I just now start my new lines right on those. And in the other direction, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to mirror that, which actually is the same as rotating, but in this particular in this one, particular yeah. one, but it's not always the case in every one because this has a you know only there, some have one symmetry, some have two, some have three. So you can see. Now there's that meta shape of that four pointed, um, that 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 four pointed white star in the middle there. And now I'm going to go and again mirror, and you'll see that now we're we're developing a. Um, a diamond shape. A diamond yeah. shape. Very pretty. These are great meditations, these yes. uh, s simple ones here. And just going to keep doing that, mirroring back and forth until I finish up that whole row. Right? That's sort of cool. Mm -hmm. So my my plan at this point is uh, going to explore, you know, putting another line in there. So I start my tangle, uh, my uh, fragment, and I don't know if you're really <laughs> catching it, but I didn't catch it at the time. Is that I did this one a little bit differently, instead of going from the corner to the opposite sides, I did one opposite side to both corners. And in a little bit, I'm going to realize what I did. <laughs> <laughs> this is live. <laughs> this, is, this is totally live. But I, I left it because it was, it gave a really good example of uh, Okay, well, what could we do with this? Exactly. Right? Okay, so this was unexpected, and at some point... This is one of the big parts of Zentangle that is so important, is, is working with what you did, right. you know? It's like, now, I'm, now I've just figured it out. It's like, oh, oh, So oh. you're going to mirror it? <laughs> right. So I decided 
I, I went through the thing. Okay, well, I, did I start over? And I said, no, let's, let's just see where this goes. So I'm going to mirror my quote-unquote mistake, and, uh, and we'll just, we're going to work with that. Because in effect, what, what I've done here is uh, created a, a new- mis A, a mistangle. Um, well, a new fragment. <laughs> yes. A new, a mistangle fragment. Right. And we, we want you to embrace these opportunities because the, this, this, is, this is what teaches you more than anything else. So he's going to put this right. in as one of his. Uh... So we got, a, we got a new fragment out of that. And, and I, I was so excited to bring my mistake to Maria. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> like showing a dead her bird. in the office. <laughs> you know, like a cat brings whatever to the doorstep and leaves it's like, look, look, look. And, and look at how, more importantly, look at what I was able to do with it. Some people get flowers. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> uh. So I'm basically, you know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go with this and see where it takes me. And uh, So he's going to uh, reproduce that second tangle in this, in this row. And that's really what a pattern is, is something that repeats. So even if the what you're repeating isn't what you expected to begin with, in its repetition, it becomes a pattern. And so we're doing, doing that. And then it looks kind of cool, right? Mm -hmm. It works. So on this one, I've decided I'm going to go back. I think I did. Let's see. Yeah, I'm going to go back to the uh, original new uh, fragment, and we're just going to put those in on this other side, and it brings out a um, a whole new exercise of the idea of combining fragments. So as you look at the, you know, your fragments, you can also look at combining fragments, and you can use your uh, icosahedron to, to help you in that effort. So again, we're just mirroring that. Really, like Maria said, this is a great meditation. It's a, just a wonderful focus. Stroke back and forth. Remembering to light touch on your pen, remembering to breathe, remembering to relax. And, and don't forget that Rick and I have been doing this for like 15 years. Yeah and still have a misstep every once in a while that enables us to learn and, and uh, challenges us. Right? Yeah. Look at that. Isn't How that fun is that, right? So also in your book, there's this, this list of uh, things and, um, or opportunities to put down like playful choices. So in this case, I'm going to put a couple down, pick a fragment, and then duplicate it by rotating, mirroring, or both. And then the other uh, inspiration from this was to mix fragments, <laughs> even if you, if you didn't <laughs> mean expect to or to, not, yeah. right? I love that. So this is a really fun one. And uh, again, thanks, everybody, for playing with us. And uh, we're going to see you tomorrow. Okay. We got more to come. More to come. Bye. Thank you. Bye now.